Hi there, Tim with After Later Audio. This video is going to be covering the Canyon as a standalone module. It is one of the two centerpiece modules in our Create Your Own Complex Oscillator System, or COCO. So right here is a COCO system, Cascades, uh, Primary Oscillator, Canyon, and then two Brooks as the secondary and tertiary oscillators. There is already a video about using Canyon as a centerpiece in Coco. So as I said, we are gonna just be looking at Canyon as a standalone module today. What is Canyon? It is a subharmonic generator. It can take two different inputs uh, and create subharmonics. There's an odd side and an even side, so you can actually plug in two different oscillators and get two sets of subharmonics off of those. Um, or you can plug the same oscillator in and get the odd and even. And with the mix output, you can actually get a mixture of these subharmonics. There is CV in to control the uh, crossfader between odd and even. This mix level attenuator, it's just the amplitude of what's coming out of the mix. This is really useful when you're using it as a stepped voltage generator. And the way you can create stepped voltage out of Canyon is by feeding it you know, slower signals, lower frequencies, sub-audible stuff like LFOs and whatnot. Um, so when you're doing that, this mix level actually uh, can be thought of as a kind of a range. So when you're trying to find a sequence you like, you know, if you go all the way up here, you're gonna get some really, really high stuff. So I like to dial this in before I put it through a quantizer. What I really like, especially when you're using it as a stepped voltage generator, is this reset button that also has a uh, gate or trigger input. One thing I do wanna note is uh, all of these switches with the gold boxes around them where they say clock or track sync, they don't have any function when you're using it as a standalone module. So if you wanna see what those do, uh, I'll refer you back to our video that covers Canyon as the centerpiece in the Coco system. So why don't we hop in and see what kind of sounds we can make with this. Okay, so starting out, I'm just using two different Brooks oscillators. They are pretty closely tuned together and I'm sending both of their sine waves into Canyon. So the Brooks on the left is going into the odd harmonic input and then the Brooks on the right is going into the even harmonic input. And why don't we just start turning these up in the mix. I will start with the odd side. So here we have our first, third, fifth and seventh harmonic. Don't think of those as first, third and fifths or sevenths in, you know, music theory. This is more of like the actual number of harmonics as far as the waveform goes. So let's just uh, turn these all up. Each one of these knobs uh, basically is just your amplitude for the, the harmonic that's being generated from the oscillator. All right, so let's just uh, check out these harmonics. Here is harmonic one on the odd side. Harmonic three, harmonic five, or I should say subharmonic five, and seven. So, as you can see, you can get a blend of all these different harmonics at different amplitudes, so you can get you know a really specific sound dialed in. All right, now moving on to the even side. I've got this second Brooks here going into the even side, so let's check out these harmonics. Here's our second. Our fourth. Our sixth. And our eighth. And now let's turn them both up in the mix at the same time. So you can get a really nice, fat bass sound out of this. Okay, so let's check out this mix output. This is a mixture of the odd and even sides. And like I said earlier, this mix level attenuator is basically the amplitude when you're using it in audible frequency ranges. And then the crossfader goes between the even and odd side.
and you get some pretty fun control over that. So let's just put uh, just a sine wave LFO into the crossfade. This is really useful because now you've got three outputs, so even though it's, you know, the mix is sending out a mixture of these two, you can still send them into different PCAs that open at different times and get a lot of really fun results out of that. Okay, now we're going to look at Canyon as a uh, step voltage sequencer. So, like I said, if you send it some uh, sub-audible frequencies, you actually will create stepped voltage sequences on the even and odd sides. I'm running a sine wave LFO out of this Brooks here into the uh, odd and even inputs, and then I'm running a mix out into a quantizer. And then I'm using this Cascades over here as the voice. I'm using the morph out um, that can just go between different wave shapes, and then I'm going to eventually bring in some CV from the odd harmonic side here, but we're not going to do that quite yet. I just want to show you this as a stepped voltage sequencer. So what we're listening to right now is the uh, odd harmonic side. Uh, now I can start blending the even and odd together to create a pretty wacky sequence. And then we can just go all the way to the odd, or even, excuse me. Okay, so now let's take a look at just the even side, and uh, we'll turn these knobs, and I'll, it'll give you an idea of, of what's going on here. So these are the amplitude of the subharmonics when you're using it in VCO mode, but this is basically the pitch of your sequence when you're using it in LFO mode. And then like I said, this mix level is kind of like a range output. Um, again, in the subharmonic generation in VCO mode, this is kind of an amplitude of the mix output, but here you can see that you start getting some pretty high frequencies. So I think this is a fun way to get some variation out of your patch. You know, you could hang out on the odd side and that can be your baseline for a little bit or whatever and then start blending them or just use the, the even side and you can even use some uh, CV control to, for the crossfading. Um, but you also have the odd and even outs so you can use those as fun uh, stepped voltage control and I'm going to put those into the morph CV input on the Cascades. The other day I saw a comment on one of our videos that was asking what is a real world application of a subharmonic generator within your modular ecosystem. And something I like to do is try to stretch out uh, a sequence as far as I can um, as far as different voices within a system, especially something small like this. So I like to take a 16 step sequence, run it into Cascades, use this Cascades to generate the subharmonics on both the even and odd side, and then use these two different oscillators now, essentially the sub oscillator and the primary oscillator to go into two different channels and have them, uh, or two different VCAs that are opened at different times. I don't have any envelopes in here, so it's not going to be the perfect um, representation of what I like to do, but I do have some LFOs that are synced together and tracking each other. So I like to put the lead voice into a VCA that's maybe opening more often and maybe a little staccato, uh, and then the bass into a VCA that's only opening maybe every you know once a measure twice a measure uh, and that way you can get the same sequence coming out of both oscillators but they're not 100 percent copying each other and in fact if you do your vca opening um in, in you know in a tricky enough way you can actually have them be completely separate if you're 
you know, just make sure that your sub is opening when your lead is not, and those notes are different than what's happening when the lead opens again. Um, so yeah, this is just like a really fun little real world application of that. And it sounds pretty cool. Of course, like I said, it would sound a lot cooler if we had envelopes and not LFOs opening the VCA, but I think you get the picture. All right, so that is our video on how to use Canyon as a standalone module. It's very, very fun. If you would like to learn about how it works within a Cocoa system, please visit our video that covers that exact topic. Thank you so much for watching.